Hello everybody, this is Ross Buecher from Control My Nikon and welcome to the Using Live View tutorial. Live View is very easy to use within Control My Nikon and it allows you to display the Live View image on your large computer monitor so you don't need to look at that small LCD panel on the back of your camera body. This can be very handy because it lets you look at your composition in more detail, closely check the focus, and plus it's just convenient. You're not having to crouch over your LCD monitor, and that can be very challenging, especially if you have your camera positioned in an odd position. So uh, if you can put that on the monitor, there's a lot of advantages. Now, not all cameras have Live View, but most of the newer Nikons do. Let's take a look at how you start up Live View. So I have hooked up to a D7000 camera and I'll connect to it. Now to turn Live View on, all you need to do is click on Live View. And I have a sunflower as a subject here. The default size of the Live View screen is about this big, but you can shrink it down as needed depending on how much screen real estate you have. Or you could bring it up larger and even full screen if you like. But you'll notice that as you bring it up larger, the live view image gets a bit pixelated. So for example, if you look in here, you know it looks not too bad, but if I bring it this big, it's starting to look more pixelated. And if I bring it even larger, then it's even worse. Now the reason for that is Nikon only sends a small amount of data from the camera back to the computer when you're tethered. And let's see exactly what it's sending. I'm just going to bring up this diagram here. And let's say that you are out and on a street and taking this nice photo of this car. In the, your camera, it will take the image at you know 4928 by 3264 or something pretty high like that, depending on your camera. So if you were to take a still image, uh, that's what you get. Now, when you turn on live view, your camera starts collecting those images at 24 frames a second and it collects those at the same resolution. That's quite a bit of data. But it doesn't send all this 24 times a second to your computer. It actually compresses it down to a 640 by 480 or a 640 by 426 JPEG normal image. That's kind of a low quality JPEG and it's pretty darn small. So it sends those 640 by 480s at 24 frames a second to your computer. Now, once it's in Control My Nikon, Control My Nikon takes it and displays it in one of these windows. It's like you see up here. The resolution that is displayed in the window is still 640 by 480, but uh, you know, if you stretch the window like this, you're still only showing a 640 by 480 image. And just like in Photoshop or any paint program, when you zoom into an image too much, it starts getting pixelated. So if you were to bring this full screen, it isn't the greatest quality. But that's what uh, we have really uh, available to us uh, out of the body. So you just need to keep that in mind, that the image you see here in Live View is always degraded and from a smaller image source than you will actually get on your final image. Now the frame rate also changes as well. You know, you're going to have 24 frames a second coming to you from your camera. However, your computer, if it's a really old, slow netbook or an old computer, it might only be able to update it at, oh, 10 or 15 frames a second here. This computer here that you're looking at, though, uh, is very fast and you'll get a full 24 frames a second. And now it's tough to see any motion here, but I'm just going to move this flower around a little bit. And uh, you can see that uh, it's not choppy at all it's giving you a full 24 frames per second. If you had a slow computer, that would look kind of kind of jerky. Let's take a look at some of the features of Live View. You can always resize it as you need here. If we go to the View menu, we can also show thirds, and if you like, you could change the colors of that. So you just go down the lines color, and let's say I wanted red lines instead. We'll show that. And I'm just going to bring the colors back to lime. Okay, so that helps you line up your composition onto your rule of thirds. And you could turn those off if you don't need them. 
you can also turn on the focus box. Now, the focusing is an interesting thing within Live View in that it uses contrast autofocus as opposed to the normal phase autofocus that your camera uses when it is not in Live View. And this little box here shows you where the, your current focus attempt would be. So if I was to double click over here or double click here, that moves the focus box. And if I want to focus, now I just click on AF and it performs a contrast autofocus. And when that box turns green, that means that the Nikon body thinks that is in focus. So let's try focusing on this. Okay, that's supposed to be in focus. How about all of this? So it's having some pretty good luck focusing there. Let's try this piece. So if it turns green, you're good to go. If it did not focus properly, this box would remain a red color. So let's see what else we have. Now if you don't want that focus box there, you could turn it off. You could show blown highlights. So if this was really blown out and uh, was too bright, then uh, it would appear. And I'm just going to adjust the ISO here. And it's important to note that when you're in live view, there's certain things you can and cannot adjust. So I could change the shutter speed on a D7000. So if I go to from 180 to 1250, it's going to be darker. Okay. I could change my ISO, so if I wanted to make this very bright, I could increase the ISO. And I'm just going to turn on the show blown highlights, and they show up as green, so I'm going to make it even brighter. These little green things you see here indicate that these areas have been blown out. And here, of course, at the highest ISO, everything's going to be blown out. And fortunately, back here at 200, it was still pretty good. You could change your white balance while you're in live view. So, and I had preset it here by doing a white balance calibration. Uh, so it is properly set for preset one. And there's also a video tutorial out there on how to do a white balance calibration. One thing you cannot set while you're in live view is the aperture. And so if I'm currently at f8, and I wanted this to be f16, if you watch the image, it's not going to make a difference. Nothing. Okay, the only way to change the aperture is you need to go out of live view first, then change it, then turn on live view. And you can see because we went from f8 to f16, it's now darker. So I'm going to go back to my f8 to change it. I'll need to go out of live view and back to F8. Let's take a look at some of the other things you can do in Live View. Now we also have the ability to show an image review. Image review allows you to review the image captured in this area where the Live View is. And I'm just going to demonstrate first of all capturing an image when you're in Live View. I'm going to bring up the Image Viewer And I'm just going to take a shot. So we have live view up here and the captured image here. You can see this is just of a lot higher quality when you look at it than this because uh, you're dealing with a lot more pixels. But let's say you didn't have a lot of real estate. Maybe this was a netbook and you don't have room for the image viewer. So I'll turn off the image viewer. I'm now just going to expand my live view window and I'm going to turn on image review. So now it's on and that works in conjunction with the image review settings here in the preferences screen. You can see here that you could tell it to do an image review for default 8 seconds or to have it pause while you are reviewing it. We'll try these. So right now if I take a shot it's going to replace this live view image with the actual captured image and it'll count down, we'll view it for 8 seconds, and then it'll automatically start showing live view again. So let's give it a try. So we'll shoot. Now it's reviewing. And it just counts down. Oh, 
Okay, now, so another way we could do this, if we go to preferences, and we wanted to change that amount of time that it waited to do the image review countdown, you could change it here. But we can also tell it to auto pause. So now when I take a shot, it's just going to pause. And you use your spacebar to pause and unpause it. So uh, here, I'll press the spacebar. It'll c continue to count down. I'll press spacebar again to pause it. Press spacebar. And it continues. So let's try that one more time. So I'm going to shoot. And it's going to be already paused. Now if you press the space bar, in this case nothing happened because you need to ensure you click first on the live view window, then press your space bar. So let's try that. I've clicked on the window, press space, and it starts a countdown. Press space again, pauses it, press space again, and it's done. So it's really up to you how you like to use that. I normally keep the auto pause off and just use a long duration. Now you can also take a shot like this and have it reviewing. Click on the window and press the space bar anyways and it pauses for you. So all auto pause does is presses the space bar for you immediately after your shot was taken. Yeah, we'll let this count down. Now some other options we have here we could save our live view image. And so sometimes, you know, you might want to just keep this image for further uh, reference. Sometimes you might want to just save this live view image for future reference. Or if you're going to be using image overlays, you'll use this saved image to help you create the overlay. When you save the live view image, it's just saved into the same folder as you would put your captured images. So it's going to save it here into whatever you have set up in your current profile. And our current profile is Macro Flowers uh, Sunflower. And I've told it to save all images captured and see images. So if I go save live view image, that image is going to appear in that window. And I'll just bring up Windows Explorer. We'll take a look at it. And there it is right here. Here's the images I captured earlier. And the resolution of this image is 640 by 426. When we're completely zoomed out of a live view image, the resolution is 640 by 426. If we zoom in, it's going to become 640 by 480. Let's see what else we have. If we go back under the view menu, we can also change the selection color. And this is used for working with histograms. We have a histogram tutorial coming up. We also have live view smoothing. And what this does is just smooths out the live view image so it doesn't look quite as jaggy or pixelated. Now, if you have a fast computer, you may as well use this. If you have a slower computer, though, like a slow netbook, this will cost you several frames per second. Your, just your live view image doesn't look quite as good.